welcome back to the channel folks, it's me Matsmus and if you're into modern military vehicles and tactical systems and everything cutting edge in the battlefield tech, you've come to the right place today because we are looking at a very interesting platform. Today's video is something a little special for me too, we're going to be talking about one of the most advanced 8x8 armoured combat vehicles in the world right now, the FNSS Pars Alpha 8x8. Now many of you know already that I've covered the FNSS vehicles in previous videos and they've been incredibly supportive and kind of my work. They've even went out of their way to send me a model of the Pars Alpha in a full brochure package which was really generous and an unexpected gesture and in the past they've actually sent me a tracked fighting vehicle as well which is the medium tank that they produced in the past which I thought was really really cool. Even more exciting, they've actually shown interest in having me potentially visit their facilities in 2026 to get hands on with some of their systems up close. Honestly that is a huge honour for me to participate in something like that and we'll see how that goes but today we're going to do a bit of a deep dive into everything that makes the FNSS Pars Alpha such a formidable and future proof 8x8 platform. I want to cover its revolutionary design, performance, firepower, protection systems, situational awareness capabilities, strategic deployment and why it has so much international interest. Let's jump right in. First of all let's talk about its fifth generation design and development. The PARS Alpha isn't really just an upgrade, it's actually a complete evolution. FNSS calls this vehicle a fifth generation 8x8 built from the ground up to dominate the modern battlefield. Every design element reflects the current and future operational needs including a lower profile, wider internal volume and a reimagined crew layout. It's definitely smartly engineered, you can tell by the way this vehicle is made, it's put together very very well. And the fact that they have kind of, I guess, showcased this in a configuration where it can be very modular, I know you, you, you guys love me saying that word, but it is. It can be retrofitted to become its Cold War relic setup or a completely new beast entirely. The name Alpha also isn't for show either. FNSS wants this vehicle to lead the pack and in many ways it kind of does. It's lighter, faster and more modular than any previous vehicle in the PARS series with enough built in flexibility to adapt to future tech, mission profiles and combat doctrines. You can tell FNSS didn't hold back, they went all out to future proof this platform, there is so much capability in it. And why is it that 8x8s are starting to become more popular? Well we have the Boxer, we have the Patria vehicles, there's so many different capabilities now with more prominent wheeled vehicles. I just recently did a video on the new Lav 6 Mark II uh, which is going to be an interesting 8x8 setup and a modernized version of that too but 8x8s are becoming a lot more common across the battle space and militaries around today and it's uh, sad for me to say that wheels are slowly taking over tracked uh, vehicles I think in the you know common space of uh, armored fighting vehicles but they're not going to be replaced. 8x8s are certainly not going to be the complete future of armored fighting vehicles but FNSS has certainly taken a huge chunk of the pie so to speak when it comes to international options for wheeled variants that could take over tracked capabilities. Now the PARS Alpha mobility is really where things get wild, you're looking at an 8x8 drive with all wheel steering allowing for tight turns that defy expectations for a vehicle of this size. FNSS developed a fully independent hydromatic suspension system that can adjust the ride height dynamically, that means it squats lower for high speed highway movement and raises up for mine protection or uneven terrain. It is very good from what I can tell from my research at going off road, particularly in sandy environments. Top speed? over 115 kilometers an hour for a 30 ton vehicle, that's impressive. In terms of operational range more than 800 kilometers and that's without any added fuel tanks or logistical support. This thing is built to move not just cross flat ground but just about anywhere. We're talking 70% inclines, deep fords, 0.8 meter vertical obstacles and trenches over 2 meters wide. Even with all that weight and armor it doesn't sacrifice control. FNSS designed the PARS Alpha to perform like a rally car in an APC and as you can see it driving around it is almost like a rally car. A very tight steering radius, constant traction and very good visibility from inside with the different periscopes and 360 degree cameras that this thing has. To add to that redundancy features the run flat tires and damage control systems that keep it mobile and aware of what's going on with the platform even if one or two wheels have been lost. You've got a platform that just keeps going and will tell you what's wrong and what needs to be addressed. It's a mobility gold standard I would say in the 8x8 space. 
Now, in terms of protection and survivability, in today's combat environments, survivability isn't just about the armor, it's about layered defense. And that's exactly what FNSS did with the Pars Alpha. The armor itself is rated against Stanag 4569 level 4 and beyond, protecting against kinetic energy rounds, artillery splinters, and even large caliber threats depending on the configuration because it is modular. But it goes deeper than that. The vehicle can raise the suspension to increase that ground clearance I mentioned for the high threat missions involving IEDs. The crew sits in blast annuating seats and the cabin is designed for mine resistance geometry built right into the hull. This isn't just add-on survivability, it's actually baked into the structure of the vehicle from the ground up. Then there's the electronic countermeasures, and FNSS offers laser warning systems, soft kill jammers, and CBRM protection. And for forces with a budget, the PARS Alpha can integrate hard kill APS, something still quite rare in vehicles of this weight class. Whether this vehicle is rolling into an urban zone riddled with RPGs or convoying across mine prone routes, this platform is all about keeping the crew and the people in the back alive. FNSS calls this the crew first design and I would say they're not wrong, it's got survivability written all over it and as you can see this awareness is very key for the crew look at all the different vision capabilities this platform has that's very important 360 degree situation awareness for your infanteers jumping out the back or your crew is something i can attest to is nothing worse as a vehicle crew commander not being able to see what's going on around you now the firepower suite of the pars alpha is where flexibility meets lethality the base vehicle is designed to carry multiple types of weapon systems depending on the mission set most notably, it comes equipped with a Tiba 2 remote control turret, which I have done a video on in the past, with either a 30mm or a 40mm cannon. You get a dual feed system that allows the gunner to switch between arm and piercing and HE rounds at the push of a button. If you need more punch, FNSS designed the turret to support integrated HGMs, typically two pods mounted on each side. These can reach out to beyond 4 to 5 kilometers to destroy enemy armor. More of div I would say a defensive measure, you're not going to want to be attacking uh, with this particular setup, but it does give you that capability to defend yourself if you need to. Combined with very good day and night optics, thermal sights, and full stabilization, this allows Pars Alpha to shoot on the move with incredible precision. And from what I've done in my research, the different turrets and variants that you can put on this thing is wild. There is so much capability in terms of its modularity. So if you want something that's straight off the shelf that has a 30mm gun or something that's got a little bit more punch with a 40mm, you can tailor this platform to do just about whatever you want it to do. That is very, very important in militaries of today. Having a standalone platform that only does one thing is not very good because you want something that can change between roles in your forces, particularly if you're on a budget. There's no point having 50 vehicles with just 50 of the same turret why not have 50 standalone platforms that can engage multiple targets from different distances but if you don't need that anymore take that turret off and replace it with something else that engages you know potentially uh longer range targets potentially of course with that atgm you're getting even extended range beyond the standard engagements of your weapon system you have on there that's a big game changer for most militaries but it doesn't stop there the vehicle can be fitted with a 90 millimeter or 105 millimeter gun turret for fire support roles they've even mentioned the potential integration of automated mortar systems like the alcar this means one chassis can fill multiple roles ifv fire support reconnaissance or even anti-aircraft and the right weapons being installed give you flexibility. Of course, this can be strategically lifted as well, very easily loaded into aircraft, and that gives you a lot of operational availability for your vehicles on the ground. And if you need them to be in a certain zone or area quickly, there they are. One of the first things you'll notice in the PARS Alpha is its side-by-side -side driver and commander layout, something most modern APCs don't offer. This gives the crew members the same wide-angle view of the battlefield, improving reaction times, communication, and target acquisition. From a human performance standpoint, and I can speak to this myself, this layout just makes sense. No more awkward neck turning or relays of communication. The commander and the driver can point out on the screen and immediately see what the other sees. It increases coordination and builds redundancy. If one is injured or compromised, the other can immediately take over. 
But it's not just the visibility out the windows. The Pars Alpha integrates the 360 degree camera system and high resolution day night sensors and a fully networked battle management system. I've spoken about this a thousand times. If you don't have a good battle management system in today's network battle space, you're in a lot of trouble. Communication is so important. It's underrated radios and the boring life you know, that unfortunately signalers have is just communication, but it is so important. If you have a battle management system that can tie into that, it gives the crew real-time tactical feeds, map overlays, and enemy tracking data from UAVs or other units, which of course we know drones are a massive threat. If you can communicate and know where they are and obscure yourself from them, it's a huge game changer. What does this mean in practice though? Well, it means that when buttoned up, the crew has full spherical situational awareness. You're not blind inside this vehicle. You're fully connected. And in fact, the visibility suite is so extensive, troops in the back can get a real-time feed before they even dismount. This is very common now in a lot of IFVs and APCs. There's even integration support for blue force tracking and shared digital target markers, which means no more screaming grid references over radios. Everything is synced. And for the dismounts, the rear compartment is spacious, climate controlled and modular. Whether it's infantry, engineers, medics or UAV teams, everyone rides with full environmental protection and pre-mission data. Simply put, this is a 21st century combat cockpit. Now I know I mentioned this before, but it's pretty critical. They built this to be strategically mobile. The Alpha fits inside large military transport aircraft like the C-17 Globemaster III and Airbus A400M, meaning it can be airlifted to anywhere in the world with minimal preparation. The dimensions are optimized for rapid deployment under 3.1 meters wide and less than 2.4 meters tall in the transport configuration. The suspension can lower itself for tight air transport aircraft profiles. And this isn't just a theory, this is real world readiness. It's been tested multiple times with these platforms being able to deliver them not only to shows around the world, but to actual customers that are using them. It's not just about the aircraft though, it can be transported by rail or driven onto ships for amphibious operations, and whether you're moving by land, sea or air, the platform is sized and specced for modern logistics setups, not Cold War era setups that are heavy, cumbersome and sometimes very difficult to load. FNSS clearly wants this vehicle to be on the front lines fast and stay there. That's why it's not just tactically agile but strategically deployable. Since its debut, they have turned a lot of heads, including mine. Even when I did my research on this, I really didn't know a huge amount about it. And I will say, I actually did a video on this platform in the past, and I was a little blindsided. Uh, I was also quite uh, juvenile in my capability to research. But it's not just Turkey, of course, showing interest with this platform. It's been showcased at major defense expos like IDEX, DSEI, and World Defense Show Saudi Arabia. International military officials have praised its layout, its protection and systems integration. FNSS is no stranger to the export game. Previous PARS vehicles have been sold to Malaysia, Oman and the Philippines. The Alpha is the next evolution and several countries are already evaluating it as part of their fleet modernization efforts, and rightly so. What makes it so attractive though? Folks, it's pretty clear. It is adaptable, and I'm going to say it again because I know you love me saying this word, modular. It can be outfitted for just about anything. Hot climates, mountainous terrain, or urban warfare. They've made it very clear. It is a customer configurable platform. Very, very open to whatever the customer wants. That's a major selling point in today's battlefield doctrine. Also, from a maintenance and training standpoint, it's pretty straightforward. FNSS offers a full lifecycle support system, simulation tools, which makes it very easy to adopt and a lot smoother for foreign militaries. Bottom line, this is more than just a showpiece, which you see a lot of showcasing of this platform, and I think it's trying to do a very good job of marketing, but the facts don't lie. It actually on paper, as well as on the ground, seems to be doing pretty well for itself. It's a serious contender, I would say, for international 8x8 armored fleets. We'll likely see Alphas wearing more than just Turkish colors very soon. So what's the verdict on the FNSS PARS Alpha? Simply put, it's one of the most capable 8x8 armored vehicles I've seen to date. From its next-gen design, heavy-hitting, customizable firepower, and exceptional mobility, its modularity modular, and global readiness, the Alpha is kind of setting a new bar. Personally, I'm honored to have received their model and brochures, and I'm genuinely excited about potentially visiting FNSS in Turkey in 2026 to see the full lineup in action. It's not every day you get to look behind the curtain of one of the industry's more forward-thinking defense manufacturers for 8x8 vehicles, and of course I have been able to visit other defense contractors like BA Systems, but 
This is a wheeled platform. I've never dealt with wheeled platforms like this before and it'd be the first time I've actually got hands-on with a platform of this kind. I haven't even been able to look at my own country's LAV6 yet in depth, which would be really nice. Hint, hint, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Uh, but if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave me a like, drop me a comment below and subscribe to the channel for more deep dives into the world of military, hardware and modern equipment. We've got more FNS coverage I'm sure coming in the future, plus vehicles from all around the globe. Thanks again for watching and until next time, Matsmas out.